Hey besties, this is Chanel, host of Girl Code Media, and I'm back for my first solo episode of the year. I'm so excited, y'all, because the solo episodes is where we actually like get into it a little deeper. Um, but I hope you guys have been enjoying the Girl Talk series. For those who are new here, the Girl Talk series was an in-person event that I did in Columbus, Ohio after the tragedy of Micaiah Bryant. Micaiah was a 16-year-old girl um, who lived in Columbus, Ohio, who called the police before an altercation, and she asked for help. And by the time they got there, she mishandled the girl fight and was seen as the aggressor on the scene. So the cop shot her four times in the chest and she lost her life. In that moment, I put myself in Micaiah's shoes. So many other times we see situations happen to others. We'll just scroll past it or we'll care about it for a little while and then we go back to our regular scheduled lives. However, I don't know not one girl who have not ever been in a girl fight. We have all been in some type of girl fight before. So that very well could have been us. All of us. So I did not want to continue to protest. And before I talked about women's empowerment stuff, I was already a woman's empowerment thought leader in that space. But I knew it was something different I was trying to bring, something new that I was trying to show. So when that tragedy happened, I realized all the people who were there that could have stopped the fight, but people be so thirsty for entertainment that they, they got their phones out because the media has it so normalized for us to fight and bicker. We are literally getting hurt for somebody else's entertainment, but didn't realize that they were going to be recording the last moments of this little girl's life. I am still, I still have that fire in me um, with sometimes when I don't want to do this anymore or like things get hard. I think about Micaiah and I think about me because I, you know, there were situations where I didn't want to fight, but it just came to me. That was her situation, but she was the one who lost her life. Um, I just... I'm tired of it, y'all. I'm so tired of it. And I didn't want to just protest. I wanted to really change the girl culture in the different communities that I was a part of. So what I did was I started in Columbus and I have a panel of women from different backgrounds social economic backgrounds. So I had CEOs sitting next to bartenders, sitting next to people who, um, were just regular employees. It didn't matter what your background was because one thing I did not want to do is continue to give opportunities. And I never did this anyway, but I see this in the women's empowerment space and just a lot of spaces. We only uplift certain people because they're doing good to societal standards. But there are so many people who aren't CEOs who are doing good that I learned from. I learned from the janitor just like how I learned from the principal. I, like, I've always seen people that way. Like, I don't care about the power. You could still, everybody has a certain power in them no matter what their title is anyway. So if we're only focused on this level, we're missing out on other perspectives that could shape the narrative as well. So what Girl Code um, Media does, just in general in all of our events, the the Girl Talk digital series that I bought to the digital space to have these important conversations. And if you have not seen a Girl Talk episode, I advise you to go back um, and check that out. But what I do is make sure there is diversity, um, that different walks of life are being represented. And what's so interesting is no matter what the background of the person is, we still share the similar experiences of girl trauma and girl hurt and mean girls in professional and personal spaces and the female rivalry and the, you know, friendship breakups and how you elevate and you lose friends and just this, the social 
the negative social norms in the girl culture. We all experience it no matter what level you're at, how much money you're making. That is something that we all share. And I wanted to bring people together and it allowed more sisterhood because those are vulnerable spaces, safe spaces. And it allowed people to shed that hurt and heal. Normally in our Girl Talk events, there's somebody that always cries. There's always people who cries because it's, you don't even realize you're carrying that hurt and that you are viewing other women and sisterhood from a negative lens because of all the things that you went through with women, all the negative experiences. But hurt people do hurt people. So we have to forgive them and give people grace because so many things that I see just in this generation um, in general, we have a cutoff culture. We will cut you off in a minute. You do something, one thing wrong, you get cut off. So when you cut people off, you leave them to the scenario of what they think happened. Instead of using that moment to teach them and teach yourself how to love because some things you do have to just forgive people for. And I say that that's one of the girl codes. Forgive your sisters like you forgive the men in your life. I literally see women go back to their man time and time and time again, but let that one, your, your friend, miss a birthday party at the Cheesecake Factory. She's cut off forever. It's petty. We don't even, the world has taught us not to value ourselves. So we don't even value each other. If dog fighting is illegal, why is it okay that we watching all these shows, Zeus Network, we're watching um, all these drama problematic shows that constantly show us that fighting is the answer to solve problems. But yet on the back end, 16 year old girls like Micaiah Bryant are getting into these fights and she's dying. There's so many girls um, that have died from girl fights. It's ridiculous, and I got tired of it, and I wanted to do something about it. I wanted to facilitate conversations, change the narrative on what it means to be in sisterhood and heal from those that girl trauma that keeps us away from sisterhood. So I am so excited for the solo series because I'm going to really be teaching you guys what it means to come from not having that community or friendships or you know, just those connections, those high quality connections to now having those high quality connections because having high quality relationships in your life leads to a high quality life. And there's so many steps that you have to take to get from here to here. It's not just about going to the event and networking. That is part of it. But since you missed all these steps before, you're going to these events time and time again, only meeting maybe one or two people, and then by, I would give it six months to a year, you don't even talk to them anymore. Or you're going to these events, you're getting their Instagram, talking about you're going to connect, but however, life gets in the way, and you, know, you didn't do the steps that it takes that people don't talk about. There's hidden personal development steps to get you to that point of actually having meaningful connections. We're getting Instagram followers and taking on this persona that they're really our friends. No, you don't have deep connections, sis. You don't have deep friendships. You don't have high value relationships in your life. Okay. So I'm here to teach you. It ain't no, look, it took me a while to learn too, but that's why like I had to go through what I went through to be here now. I had to go through what I went through to understand Micaiah's story was not going to fall on Death's ears, but I was going to continue to share her experience as a way to allow girls, young girls, see the consequences to their actions. Because we live in a world right now where decisions matter more than ever. The things that we used to get away with back in the day, and I'm not going to lie, I was never that person I could really get away with nothing. But I see it even heavier now. The cost of your decisions could impact your life negatively or positively. 
the only difference between the person that you want to be and who you are right now is your decision, sis. It's your decisions. So if you're on this channel, if you subscribed, if you liked, if you're sharing and you are engaging this platform, know that you made a decision to go on this journey with me. One, to change the narrative of the culture everywhere because it's not just about us. This is bigger than us. But in order to change the community, we have to first change ourselves. And I'm that friend, y'all. I will hold you accountable. So I'm passionate. So don't take it as like I'm yelling at you guys because that is not what it is. But I, God gave me the ability to love people because I first loved him. And I do care for God's people. I truly do. And I don't know if you guys ever been through a situation where you really love your friend and she is constantly hurt. She is constantly putting herself in negative relationships and it like impacts you. And sometimes you don't even know it. Sometimes you just don't want to answer the phone or sometimes you don't want to always be there for her because you know you're taking on her emotions. You know you are hurt when she hurt. You know you cry when she cries. That's how I feel. And I don't have to have a personal connection with you to feel that. And I see potential in people. Like I'm a visionary. Like I know what things could be like. And specifically with the girl culture, because I've had negative experiences with girls that trace back to middle school, which is something I talk about in Girl Talk too. So again, if you have not seen Girl Talk or Girl Talk episodes, please go back and um, after this, uh, go back and watch that because it's good information. But today I want to teach you guys the foundation of the high quality relationships. Because there's a foundation that needs to be laid first, ladies. And that foundation is none other than my father, God, okay? Jesus Christ, the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, all, all the things, if you will. Because God is love. And love is a foundation for any community building that you may be doing. The genuine care for people. It's not about you when you are in relationship with people. It's not. It's not. And one of the things, um, I'm going to read scripture just to tell you guys that I'm not tripping. But I did put the foundation of um, any relationship is God because just in general, like practically before I even read the scripture, practically when you see a building about to be constructed or a house about to be built, there is a blueprint. Guys, you don't just build the house aimlessly. You don't build connections aimlessly. You don't build, like, it, it leads to confusion if you do that. There has to be a blueprint. It has to be a blueprint first. And that is God. So think about it like that. He's the foundation. Before you get to the connection, you have to have the foundation laid out. You have to understand what he says about you and love and others first. You have to. And this is a scripture that backs that up. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. So if you don't do nothing, that is the first and greatest commandment is to love God with your mind, body, and soul. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's Matthew 22, 37 through 39. So he already says the first thing you are supposed to do is love me. And with my experiences, I understood so clearly why he says that, because you can't, you can't love yourself if you don't know yourself. And, you, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, this is a disclaimer, <laughs> just to let y'all know a little, put a pen in it. Your titles, your wealth, your riches, they're not going to the grave with you, right? So is that you? Is your soul, the soul that's going to eternity, 
it's, it's not your titles that's going up there, but the soul is. Who are you? Who are you? And I realize there are so many people trying to fill a void. They're going through identity crisis because they don't know who they are. Only the creator could tell you who you are. And then you could ask him, and that was one of my daily prayers, allow me to see myself the way you see me. It's a game changer when that happens. And it's a beautiful journey because it might not take, I don't know, your journey might be different. It could take you 24 hours. Mine was a journey, okay? Because then you, you, you start reading what he says about you. You start understanding his character and developing a love for God. And you start to understand how much he loves you. And it allows you to feel worthy when you probably didn't feel worthy. It allows you to understand you are the apple of his eye. It allows you to understand that you are valuable. When you are filled with that overflow, you could love others better. Because you're not going to them to fill the void for you because they can't and you are constantly getting disappointed in your relationships and making relationships off of desperation because you didn't allow God to fill that void before you start building those connections. So you're in codependency. One of the things that I noticed um, in general, just studying the girl culture for as long as I have, because I've been in this work since I was in high school. I had a girl program with my um, high school best friend in high school, literally. There are so many girls that are just waiting to be loved. They're waiting to be loved. They want to be picked. They want to be chosen to be in a relationship with this man. I mean, we see it all the time. You see like things like Krishan and Blueface and things like that. And we hurt for these women because like you, you really just want somebody to choose you you want somebody to love you and you will go to the ends of the earth to get it but do you know sis that you are already loved do you know that you are already chosen do you know that you were already the apple of god's eye do you already know that you belong so you don't have to Strip down your morals, dim your light, and do the things that does not serve you to be in relationship with other people or to climb to the top or to be in a romantic relationship. You don't have to do any of that. One of the things that I do with my girls um, in the program is I ask them, what romantic movie or novel is your favorite and why? And we talk about it. So for me, my favorite, and I really don't have favorites. I don't like the word favorites because I like everything. But one of the top romantic movies that I like is Titanic. That movie, y'all, oh my gosh. It's long, so it's long. But it's such a beautiful story. One, the way Jack was in that water, like, that's a real man, okay? Like, that is... That's a real man. I'm not, I don't even like to be cold. Like, even if it's hot, I might have, like, a little cover on my toe just to make sure. Like, I can only imagine. I can't even imagine, matter of fact, what Jack was feeling like in that ice cold water. About to freeze to death. About to drown. Go, suffering slowly while his only concern was to save the love of his life, his life. That is a powerful love story. We watch it, we cry, we think about our own relationships. We think about, dang, like, that's a beautiful romantic relationship. Like, I want that for myself, not knowing you already have that for yourself. Jesus already died for you. In real life, this ain't a movie. This ain't just a story. Jesus went to the cross with you in mind and suffered even greater for you. Mm. 
Yeah, that, that's a, you have to sit there for a while. Like, because when you think about that, because sometimes we read the Bible, we read these stories, and we, we're so distant from it. And we don't make it personal. And that's where you lack the relationship with God. And that's when you lack, like, literally, you're so focused on everything else. The most important relationship that you will ever have is with God. And this is why he's giving you the blueprint of why. This is the start of living a kingdom life, having that prosperity, having those high value relationships. You have to know that you are loved already, that you belong already. It's so powerful to think about because I can only imagine, I know from my story, how many times, again, we beg to be loved and you don't even sometimes realize it. But when you're in situations that don't serve you, you're begging. When you are in friendships that don't serve you and you know you don't and you're changing who you are for them and you are begging when you are already loved. And that is something that I had to go through um, because that void would never be filled with anybody else. It would never be filled with anybody else. You could go to the next friend group, to this friend group, hop into from this man to that man, this girl to this girl, because it's not specifically gender specific, this video. But going through relationship after relationship after relationship, trying to fill a void because you want somebody to be your everything and that is not how they were made they were not supposed to be your everything god is your everything he already has a list of names of the things that the people well not the people but the the titles that he holds he's jehovah he's our father he's closer than a, a, a brother like he literally is all those things for us but yet we're putting other relationships above him. And we're getting into these relationships in desperation. And that's not what he wants for us. And we can't even have a good relationship with ourselves until we know ourselves the way God knows us. You don't know how a computer works or invention works without looking at the instruction manual, without talking to the creator. That's the same thing. You're not going to know yourself. Sometimes I even still to this day ask God to reveal the mysteries of myself. There's so many layers that have not been unleashed yet. This is journey. But I can only know through my partnership with God. He is the foundation, y'all. And my testimony um, personally is I was that girl who I thought I did love myself. I thought I, I had the confidence. I had the confidence. I thought I was very much that girl. Like, it's not like I was, you know, crying at night. Like, oh, my gosh. Like, it was nothing like that. But you don't realize there's levels to loving yourself. Just like how when you date somebody, you might like them, but not enough to be uh, their girlfriend yet. They got to still go through that. There's these levels of loving yourself. Um, And I didn't realize I was not at the level that I should be until God, Loki, he had to do a big one on me in 2020. Like I pretty much had this whole anxiety panic attack in 2020 with all the fears of what was going to happen. I went through a horrible breakup at that time. Um, my dad died prior and I was alone. And who the people who went through the pandemic alone? Ugh. We low key are God's strongest soldiers because what you can't hug, you can't go outside and you send in this. It felt like jail in a way, especially with somebody like you don't realize how much you suppress things and how many times that you do it because you keep yourself so busy. So when you can't do nothing, you are literally like, well, some people, I'm not sure, but I know for me, I literally had so many things that I tried to bury come out and it came out in the form of anxiety attacks. And I had this moment where when it first happened, not knowing what anxiety was, not knowing what panic attacks was, and I was rushing to the hospital because all I know is they said, COVID, kill you. 
to take you out. That's like literally the beginning. They said it just takes you out. You just do a little sneeze and you can basically be, be dead. So when I was literally having trouble breathing, I thought I had this COVID that they were talking about. So I rushed to the hospital and I'm on the phone with my mom and sister, like asking them to pray and, you know, telling them I love them because I was not sure what was going on. And before I got to the hospital, right before the phone dropped, but because I was so close to the hospital, there was no need for me to call back. So I'm like, I'm about to be at the hospital anyway. But in my mind, I always thought, I'm going to put it like this. I always thought like in murder mysteries or those type of shows, you know how they say, you know, somebody might have got shot 10 times and, you know, they get carried to the, the hospital and they die an hour later or whatever. That's it felt like I was in that type of scene where it felt like the end was I might die. And you just look over your life. Like, are these the last moments of my life? And whew, when I thought about how I spent my time and what I did those past four years dealing with that toxic relationship that showed me that I didn't love myself, the drama that I had went through, the people that talked about me, the friendships that I lost, the friendships that I, like just didn't serve me, the, this, the, the drama that it took for me to stay in that relationship because I just wanted to prove that I was loved and that I can be loved. I was not happy with reimagining what my life was. Because when I was imagining it, it, it felt like I was in a movie in my own life. And it was not given. It was not given. I'm just like, ooh, this is not. Let's turn this off. Next channel. And that showed me the value of time. And sometimes we're spending our time in these foolish relationships and don't realize how much time we're giving it. And I was like, God. If you keep me, I promise I will be the woman that you call me to be. And girl, I went to the hospital to tell me it was anxiety. But oh, he knows I'm dramatic. He knows I need to see that little, that little experience. Uh, it didn't need to be nothing super, super dramatic like in real life. But he knows I'm dramatic enough that that's all it took. It was an anxiety attack. And I pray for anybody going through that because that is no joke. No joke at all. And I literally went through that for about six months. I had to understand my fears, understand my triggers, understand the negative thoughts that I had about myself and to really tap into God's word and what he says about me. Because when you know you are loved the way that God loves you, you're not going to tolerate the same thing. You just not. If you are the apple of his eye, if he died for you and, and he said you are fearfully and wonderfully made, why would I allow somebody to not treat me like that? If I am a queen, serve under his royal heir, why would I be allowing a, a guy to not be consistent with me? Why would I allow a friend to be negative and, and toxic and not value me? Why would I do that? That's beneath me. Yeah, you have to get like that. That's beneath you. And then you start developing high quality relationships because you think highly of yourself because you went back to him who told you who you were and he told you how to love yourself based off how he loved you. So you are able to now love others. He is the foundation, guys. And he is the standard. And that's all Girl Code is. It's just a standard. It's a book of standards and principles and morals that shapes your belief system. And your belief system shapes your decision making. And we have to make better decisions this year. Better decisions this year. So, but before we get to that high quality community, we have to have a better relationship with ourselves. And that starts with him first. So I can't wait to get into this journey with you guys. It's going to be a fun one.
So if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Please send it to anybody who you could think of who may need it. Uh, sometimes, you know, you, you watch something and somebody comes on your heart. Send it to like at least five people who may need it because I feel like God placed in me this message for a reason. Because again, we're, st we're skipping so many steps in our relationship building and it's causing so many broken relationships and hurt people do hurt people. And there's so many people who are hurt and they're loving people based on the, de the definition of what they saw. And that's hurt. So hurt people hurt people and they're going to continue to bleed on people. And you may not know you're doing it, but guess what? Healed people heal people too. And that's something I say in all, like all my girl talks. To give you hope that even though you're broken and that you may not have it all together and that this will be a journey, that you're going to get to a place of healing. And God cares so much about you that there's so many people like me um, who really don't want to do this. Like, this is not really my thing to be on camera and to be talking, doing this podcast, trying to understand this mic situation and camera. It was a lot. And the devil attacked me so much up to this point. This is probably like my fifth video. I'm not going to lie. But he cares about you so much that he is causing people in this season to do it even when they're afraid, to do it when they don't feel like it, because he wants to reach you. Because once he reached you, he can now use you in the world as well. Because that's why relationships are so important. We're even in partnership with God. God values partnership so much that he dis like he displays it. He is really the blueprint, y'all. I'm telling you. So he, he has given me a word and understanding and a theme that has been in my life for so long that now I just want to teach it because there's so many people who lack those social skills. So many people who are out here that don't love, you, uh, love themselves and they can't love others if they don't love themselves. And you may think you're loving them, um, but... That's desperation, sis. That's codependency. That's not love. And you're not receiving love because that's not even what you give off. And you don't understand the definition of love, which is going to be another video as well. So there's just so many steps before you get to the community. Um, and sometimes you're going to these events and networking events, women's empowerment events, and you're, you're going because you want the community um, and there's still some voids. You want the connection. You want that. And it's our, in our human nature to want that. God literally created Eve because he knew man could not be alone. It's a natural thing. Like we are supposed to want connection. However, you didn't go through the steps to like really have a high value relationship. A deep connection because we're going to these events you're saying hi you're getting your Instagram followers like showing people your your Instagram and everything else follow me follow me and you're mistaking a follow with a connection so they are not deep they're not deep y'all might like each other's stuff here and there but you are not really creating quality connections because you did not do the work and you don't know how so I am your bestie for that girl. And I always say, you know how people have their little names for their channel. I say bestie just because there's so many girls in my studies of facilitating these conversations and being out in the community and doing this work who don't have a best friend. So if you don't, and you know, it's no need to cry, sis. I will be that best friend for you digitally. Like, I got you, girl. We here. And I'm going to, hopefully, with my messaging in you know, it's in partnership. You have to apply these things, get you the friends, the, the relationships, the connections that will elevate your life. Because having high quality relationships leads to a high quality life. And we live in a generation where it's not about what you do anymore or how much you know. It's about who you know. So it elevates every area in your life. So I'm going to help you guys with that and like really dive deep. So 
Take your time. It's not like a popcorn microwavable thing that we're used to. Something quick and fast and easy. No. Anything worth having takes work. It takes time. And these solo episodes are meant for that. Also, if you do not have your Girl Code book, definitely get your Girl Code book by Chanel Jack on Amazon. That is also another foundation of God's principles. So that's just like a cute little rule book that has uh, four different chapters, yourself, friendships, relationship, and business. Just rules to live by just because you probably are in relationships with people now and you're trying to figure out how to just navigate who you got. Because sometimes God wants to see if you can steward who you have first before we even get to those relationships. So that's another video as well. But there are so many steps, y'all. This thing is so deep and people be trying not to make it deep, but it's deep. Connections are deep. Partnerships are deep. So definitely get your Girl Code book. Um, and I am going to start touring for the Digital Girl Talk series, just like how I did in Ohio when I was going to different cities and talking to different women. So I want to come to your city. So comment where you're at um, because I do want to continue to talk to a panel of women of, for all different types of um, backgrounds to talk about your experiences with women, things that you've seen and things that impacted you and how we could come together and continue to fight for this change in our girl culture. Because I'm a, like I told y'all, I'm a visionary and I could see and I know the impact of one woman in my life, the right woman in your life. What? It could change your life. So just imagine if everybody was on that one accord and we actually stood up for each other and it shows other people. It's the same concept when we stand up for ourselves as women and girls, the world will now value us too because of the love that we are, the standard that we're setting. The girl code is a standard. It's the standard that we have to set and the standard, the bar is low. I'm not gonna lie, right now the bar is low. It's ghetto out here. The bar is low. This is time to raise the standard. God is calling you to raise the standard. It's not just a me thing, it's bigger than me. I'm just the messenger. But he wants his daughters to raise the standard. See yourself how he sees you treat others the way because he said you you will know my disciples based off how they live that's why people are so church hurt sometimes because of the experiences they had with people and it's not you don't go to church for people you go to church for god but that's how impactful relationship uh encounter is those social encounters are i literally did without me being the best christian ever so many people gravitated to me based off how I treated them. And they knew it was only God because I knew how to turn the other cheek. I know how to have this grace. And again, I have God gave me the gift of loving people to where I show up as love. So people see God's light in general. I didn't have to be the perfect Christian. And there's no such thing as perfect any, anyway. So we trying to achieve perfect. We would never be perfect. So that's out the window. But people, I literally didn't understand why I was so inspirational to everybody. I didn't know why people gravitated to me. The success that I have now is because of my connections and that the foundation was everything God told me to do. And I knew that since a child. So those fundamentals is why I have such a big network, why I am known in the community. And I don't have a degree. I don't have none of the things that would have like any backings or any company backing me. I don't have none of that. I started Girl Talk with $15 an hour job. And I saved that little money because it was little money, like I said, and wanted to help the girl culture and the communities and everything else. Like they, literally, I... People that was inspired by me was making way more money than me. People that were inspired by me had higher titles, higher positions. But it's because of how I treated people. Just being a good person to people, showing them God's love. You are going to be blessed and highly favored. It leads to a high quality life. So the level that I have been able to get to was based off of how I treated others. I'm telling y'all, it's the cheat code. So yes, y'all, this is going to be a journey. I am here to teach the girls how to be a girl's girl. But 
to have impactful relationships all over. Because again, girl code is holistic. So again, if you heard somebody in your spirit when you watch this, please share and come back next week. Subscribe so you don't miss any of these solo episodes and comment what city you're at. Um, comment your thoughts on this or what you're struggling with when it comes to relationships. I would love to hear from you. I would love to start maybe even answering questions on here. And we're going to get into it. This is our year for higher quality relationships that leads to that higher quality life. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, my first solo episode of the year. Buckle up. This is the journey. Let's go. See you guys later.